Hi, I'm Mick Follows. I'm a senior research scientist uh, in the Department of Earth, Atmosphere and Planetary Sciences at MIT. Uh, I uh, try and understand the organisation of the global carbon cycle and global uh, plankton populations using a combination of simple models, data analysis and numerical simulations of the ocean. So we're going to talk about the past, present and future, a little bit about Gordon Riley's seminal work in the 1940s, um, a little bit about how we're using numerical simulations to understand the organisation of plankton populations today, and then a little bit to think about how um, advances in microbiology and cell biology might inform future models uh, in the next few years. Today we have these beautiful uh, images from space of the distribution of plankton in the oceans and we can see uh, these chlorophyll rich regions in the subpolar oceans with strong seasonal blooms. Uh, these are classic features that we know about but back in the 1930s and 40s these were only uh, known from a few local in situ observations and in the late 30s and early 40s Gordon Riley and his colleagues uh, did a, a, a very unprecedentedly comprehensive set of measurements of the spring bloom and variations in the environment uh, at George's Bank. They measured chlorophyll concentrations, temperature, nutrient availability, light and so on and so forth. And they uh, observed a very strong spring peak in this chlorophyll um, abundance and they tried to understand how it related to the environment, the changes in the environment. And so Riley uh, wanted to build uh, simple mathematical models of this system and he started his Riley's uh, depiction of the spring bloom from a few uh, seasonal measurements uh, with taking a ship out and at first Riley made statistical correlations of the chlorophyll concentration with uh, environmental factors like nutrient concentrations temperature uh, and this showed him some important relationships but he was also working with uh, physical oceanographers like Stommel at the time and he remarks in his work how uh, they had mechanistic models uh, of uh, a fluid dynamical models that they were using to interpret the physical features that they saw. And he wanted to bring something analogous to that to models of marine phytoplankton populations. And so he developed a simple uh, mechanistic model in which he wrote down an equation that said the rate of change of biomass of phytoplankton it was governed by the balance between a simple exponential growth rate uh, and losses due to respiration and grazing. He knew that growth uh, depended upon environmental factors like light and nutrients and so mu here is not a constant but was a parameterization of those relationships. Also respiration was parameterized as a function of temperature and grazing um, depended both on the biomass of the prey and the predators, the Z being the uh, zooplankton uh, abundance, which was also observed. And so he used a very simple relationship, but some rather clever intuition about how uh, the parameters would depend on environmental factors. He integrated this forward in time uh, to uh, simulate the uh, variations of plankton abundance as observed at George's Bank. Uh, it's interesting to remember that there were no computers at this time as we know them today and this calculation was done with pencil and paper. It took him about a week to do a single integration so he didn't tune this model a great deal, it was too much work. And it's also interesting to note that in his memoirs that he tells us that Henry Stommel gave him some advice on how to do the uh, calculations efficiently. Um, so it's interesting the kind of mixture of uh, oceanographers, the, the interactions of physical and biological oceanographers at the time. So he was very happy. He had a mechanistic model that could describe the seasonal variation, help him understand the seasonal variations uh, at George's Bank at the time. And um, while the statistical model could not provide him uh, necessarily deeper insight, this mechanistic model allowed him to tease apart the contributions from growth, respiration and grazing and how the interplay of those fluxes uh, organised the seasonal variations. So there's some added value in this mechanistic model. So this is, uh, uh, Riley really did a very seminal and important piece of work here and he showed us how we can use uh, models to 
both simulate and interpret plankton populations. He showed us how statistical models and mechanistic models had different advantages and disadvantages. And it's important to realize that the, the basic mechanics of what Riley did in that study um, still underlie what you see, the, the, the mechanics of what happens in uh, global ocean models today. So Riley, if he looked at the algorithms in our ocean models today, would very well understand what was going on. Um, and so uh, 70 years later, this has uh, uh, been uh, still an important uh, piece of work. Thinking about today's ocean models, um, uh, we, one of the big changes since Riley is that we have uh, much, much more sophisticated uh, representations of the environment. And so, uh, whereas Riley treated the ocean off George's Bank as a, a simple one box or perhaps two boxes stacked upon one another, today uh, we have uh, numerical ocean models which have been um, uh, um, enabled by advances in fluid dynamics and computational resources where we can represent the whole ocean as a whole set of boxes uh, joined together and communicating. And so this image shows a, um, the sea surface temperature in a simulation of uh, the uh, coast off Massachusetts and George's Banks so that a blocky looking hook is virtual Cape Cod um, and each of those little squares represents one grid cell and the dot at the middle of the square represents where a set of conservation equations governing heat, salt, momentum, maybe nutrients and plankton too, uh, step forward in time in a similar way to the, how Riley did. Um, but the uh, difference is that in today's ocean models, uh, the, the fluid dynamics provide uh, a, a means by which to assess the communication between neighboring boxes, so the exchange of heat, momentum, plankton or whatever between neighboring boxes. And so as we zoom out from that coarse grain view of the uh, ocean near George's Bank, uh, we can see this is part of a global simulation of sea surface temperature with an ocean model. Um, and you can see in some of the motions that this is a, 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 a connected system where transport between regions is also as important, uh, at least some of the time, as uh, fluxes in and out of the boxes through the sea surface, for example. Um, that ocean model um, uh, also simulates, of course, the, the fluid motion, and so the white colors on this uh, now indicate the speed, and you can see the things like the, ocean, the boundary currents, the Gulf Stream and the Kuroshio. And um, we can overlay on that a simulation of nutrients. Here in, in red is a simulation of surface nitrate. And we can have a population of virtual plankton consuming the nitrate and growing and being consumed by zooplankton, for example. And here in green, you can see the uh, simulation of the chlorophyll concentration that we saw in observation from space earlier, but now within the context of an, a global ocean model. It's important to remember, though, that although this is very um, complex uh, and has a very uh, sophisticated underlying fluid dynamical model, uh, you can think of the simulation of the phytoplankton as simply being uh, a whole series of Riley's models uh, joined together and communicating laterally and vertically between boxes as well. A big difference in today's models relative to Riley's model, however, is that we now uh, can simulate a diverse population of plankton. And so instead of representing the biomass of just a single uh, phytoplankton type, that simulation actually showed us the sum, the total chlorophyll, from uh, about 80 different uh, virtual phytoplankton physiologies that we seeded the model with. And now we can use this kind of model to explore uh, how different uh, physiological variants of phytoplankton, uh, different phytoplankton types, end up living in particular regions and seasons. We can use this model as a, as a tool uh, to try and investigate how real-world ecosystems are organised.